hi guys welcome to my channel thank you for stopping by I hope you guys are enjoying your day so far those of you that are fasting hold on drink plenty of water stay hydrated whether it's flavored water if you can't tolerate regular water keep drinking water guys and remember just focus whatever you're doing do it with a whole heart right as long meaning if you're doing an hour two hours half a day 6 a.m to 6 p.m through and through 24 hours of fasting just do it with a whole heart um so guys i want to encourage you all to to speak boldly to continue to speak the word of god boldly guys we cannot afford and we cannot shrink down and back up when people don't like the way things are said and how it is said we find that there is a demographic of people that is hypersensitive by they are so sensitive to correction but they're not sensitive to sin they are hypersensitive to correction or words that bring reproof but they are not sensitive in that same way to sin and to corruption and to disobedience and it seemed as if people wants to get soft foods all the time they want things mixed with with whipped cream and honey and sugar and guys as believers we must understand the balance there's a time to build up there's a time to to stand up for others and then there's a time for reproof and correction too often people are thinking that jesus was just he was just all about speaking words that made people feel good. He is a God of love. The Bible tells us that we serve a God of love and also he is a God of severity. And I believe that's in the book of Romans. Do not mistake the two. It is time for people to realize that the Bible is very balanced. The Old Testament is still significant as the New Testament is because of a lot of the New Testament refers greatly to things of the old and vice versa the pair the old and the new marry one another and teaches us the importance of serving god with a whole heart having reverence removing ourselves from sin the consequences of sin the eternal damnation that comes to those who sin as well as talking about the love the grace and the mercy of god a love and the grace and mercy of god is what really keeps us alive even when we do things that is wrong it is an opportunity right now because that's why the the salvation salvation is a gift grace and mercy is also a gift but at some point there'll be a time when you're going to knock and god will not be there you're going to call and he will not answer wisdom speaks of this in the book of proverbs that there'll come a time because right now wisdom is crying out in the streets saying come out from among them correcting 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 i wonder what would happen if in the book of proverbs wisdom and understanding muzzled themselves and didn't tell you the dangers of the adulterous woman didn't tell you the dangers of running with a violent man didn't tell you about the eternal damnations of hell on being a guest of hell for sin and the sudden calamity that will come upon us if we continue to be a person who is hasty to sin and mischief i wonder what would happen i wonder if jesus only preached lovely words and spoke things that everybody wanted to hear i doubt he would have been crucified but he ruffled a feather because why according to the lord in john chapter 17 john 15 they were angry with the lord and they hated him because he did not they no more had a cloak for their sins they liked to walk in the ignorance of not knowing things but when he came and he spoke against them, they no longer had an excuse or a cloak for it. So they sought to kill him and to hurt him. But I'm here to tell you something, my brothers and sisters. We have a mandate to speak the word of God. We are not here to say, you get a car, you get a car, you get eternity, you get eternity, you get love and eternity. This is not the message that God has called us to preach and to teach and to exhort on. There is balance, yes, indeed, but there must be time that you must drink from the bitter cup of correction and change yourself accordingly. In the book of Jude, he says something so interesting. 
It's very close to the very latter ends, right before the scripture that says, Now unto him who's able to present us faultless before his throne with exceeding joy. Before that, there's two verses above, and I'm going to paraphrase. It says there are times that we must speak with love and compassion, and then at other times we must use reproof, strict reproof in order to save the soul. Hold fast. I'm going to read it. Okay, so it is in the book of Jude. There's only one book. And let's see. Let's go to 20. But you, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And read this in 22. And of some have compassion, making a difference. 23 says, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Sometimes guys, as believers, we must, we have to keep a balance. There are times you're going to speak with compassion and other times you're going to have to speak in a way that you're saving the very souls of others through speaking what the word says about the consequences of sins. You must be real and you must uncover the things that people are ignoring and igno they're ignoring because they want to be politically correct. There are people that will, will speak and get sensitive about when you're speaking the word of God, what the word says. No one wants to hear about hell. They don't want to hear about the consequences of sin. They don't want to hear about real talk about uh, abuse in the church. They don't want you to speak about things about sexual immorality. They don't want you to touch on things of the horse and pony show that's going on. The layout of lust, the runway for carnality that's happening. We must speak on it and we must address it. It is our job to speak on these things. Study your Bible and stop. You know, there are people that are looking for the, the, the lovely, fluffy scriptures, but they're not looking at the scriptures where the Lord tells people it's better to cut off a part of your body that's causing you to sin and enter into heaven maimed and blind in one eye than to your, for your whole body to enter into sin, to enter into hell where the worms die not. <clears throat> no one wants to address that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jesus was not always speaking sweet words. There are times that he turned over the tables in the synagogue because of what was going on in the house of God. There's also in Matthew 23 when he said quite a few things to the Pharisees and scribes. And if you look in the Old Testament in Deuteronomy 28, I believe the first 12, I believe the first 12 or 16 or so verses is about the blessings. And then from about 16 on to about 60 something is about curses. Don't think the Old Testament is all the principles. Maybe the laws of Moses are no longer relevant in the sense of now Jesus, um, in the sense that Jesus came and he gave the sacrifice. So what we don't have to do anymore, Jesus became the ultimate sacrifice. So we don't no longer have to bring bullocks and turtle doves and things of that nature. And now with grace and mercy, we're not getting struck down dead like we were, like it was back in the old days. But the laws of God is forevermore. And the word of God speaks about sin. Many people today... You would have been appalled because the things that the prophets would say to the people, the prophetic words were not always lovely. The warnings of God were not pretty. There were even chapters in there when Isaiah or Jeremiah or all three, I know they were talking about different things, referring to the children of Israel as one who have gone a whoring and Every man can lay with her under a tree. Come on. They were referred to as dung. There are words in there that were not so sweet and pretty, but it all of it, it ended with repent, 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 repent. Wisdom cries out right now, calling out to the world. 
And brothers and sisters in the Lord, the Lord, the, the, those of you that God has placed his word in your mouth, do not be afraid of their faces. This is what the Lord told Jeremiah. Do not be afraid of their faces. Let me find that for you. Jeremiah chapter 1, I'm starting at 7. But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, meaning you don't think you're qualified. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, saith the Lord. See, I have set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out. That is our jobs as the brothers and sisters in Christ, as the remnant, the called. And those of us who have the gift of prophecy, we did not ask for it, but yet it's been, uh, it's a mandate and we must follow through. We've been called to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build and to plant. There is a balance. Many people want to be built and planted with sin, but we're here to call it out. Do you understand that? We are here to do the things that God has called us to do. And if you look through the book of Isaiah, and if you skim through, if you skim through the other books, you will see so many things that the Lord speaks about. How the sword, the edge of the sword shall not, the, the, the people who are, are, are sinning, the edge, of the, the edge of the sword shall not be spared against them. He speaks about abominations. He speaks about uncleanness. He speaks about his vengeance because of sin. And oh, it's, that's just the Old Testament. You look in the New Testament. The Lord Jesus raised the ante. He says not only is it a sin to do, a, to, to carry out lust, but if you even look upon someone, you've committed adultery. The Bible continues to speak about sin. And we are called to speak out, to say, repent, repent. We are called to identify the sins specifically that God is saying it is wrong. Because you're saving their souls from damnation. It is up to them whether they choose to speak the word or not. The Lord says, when I put a word in your mouth to speak and you do not speak it and that person dies in their sin, then their blood is on your hand. But if you speak the word to them and you warn them and they don't receive it and they die in their sins, their blood is not on your hands. You're freed. You've done your part. My brothers and sisters in the Lord, speak the word of God boldly. Jesus spoke boldly. He was not liked. He was not speaking about gumdrops and lollipops and cotton candy. All the time. He was healing. He was raising the dead. He was speaking and touching to the leper and healing them. But he also spoke about sin. He spoke about repentance. He spoke about turning back. He warns and he warns and he warns and he warns. And he's especially even harder on those who say they are of God. Judgment goes to the church first. To the body of Christ. He speaks and he warns of Jezebel that's standing before the people, feeding them idolatrous messages, seeped, steeped, and deep fried in the world's doctrines and ways, trying to mix truth with the words, the world's philosophies and ways of being. He warns her. He warns her in Revelation chapter 2 to turn, to turn, to turn, but she hardened her heart and she caused people to commit adultery and fornication. As she's standing before the people, giving messages, mixed with idolatry, filled with derision and manipulation. And he said, because she would not change. <sighs> I'll tell you what it said. Because everybody thinks the word of God is always about, oh, just keep doing what you want. No, there's a bunch of spiritual spoiled brats in the house of God, they only want to hear good things and they want to be aided and abetted in their sins. In Revelation chapter 2, it says, 
notwithstanding i have i have, I have a few things against you because thou hast suffered i'm starting in verse 20 thou suffers that woman jezebel which calls herself a prophet to teach and to seduce my servants there's a lot of people that's standing before people in the house of god teaching preaching singing whatever they're doing but they are seducing people committing causing the servants of god to commit fornication to eat things sacrificed unto idols things that are not of god people that mix the word of god with some other doctrines he's giving a space to repent he gave it says in 21 and i gave her space to repent but she repented not behold i will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation except they repent of their deeds and i will kill her children with death and all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and the hearts, and I will give unto every one according to I will give a, give unto every one of you, every one, no exceptions, according to your works. Wow, what would have happened today? What happened today if people oh I God says I will kill your children? Oh, this is offensive. Oh, I don't want to hear that. But you better listen up. Because that's what's going to happen. Your soul is in danger and in the balance. And I'm here to tell you, if someone is about to get hit by a car, a person's not going to say, excuse me, there's a car coming. Excuse me. Excuse me, ma'am, there's a car coming. Hey, hey. You're going to raise your voice. You're going to shout. You're going to grab them. You're going to pull them out. Pull them out of the way. Do not be ap apologetic about those tough words that the Lord gives to you. And don't you dare add your own hint of sugar in it because it sounds so bad to you. The word of God needs to get out there regardless of what they feel. Rest assured those that are raising up are normally the ones the words is hitting in their hearts. And they may curse you and they may say things against you and they may post things on your comment. But one thing for sure, their cursing and their railings and their comments and whatever they may say, it's evidence and a witness that they heard the word of God. Mission accomplished. Do not be afraid to speak God's word. Do not be afraid to shed a light on sins. Do not be afraid to identify what the Lord has called you to identify. Because out of the majority that may be running their mouth and being upset with you, there's a soul you have saved. Somebody will say, Lord, I'm coming back to you. There is a remnant in the people that is often rejected. They are talked about and they are called, we can be called the devil's children and we are not of God. Rejoice when you're called Beelzebub and the devil. Rejoice when they're angry. Be as Paul, how Peter. they were rejoicing where they were flogged for standing up for the Lord. Rejoice when they call you a devil. Because they called your master, they called our master a devil. Rejoice when they want to say, who are you? Aren't you such and such? Because they says, aren't you? They did the same thing to our master. They reviled him. Aren't, isn't this the carpenter's son? And they were indignant. Rejoice when they want to challenge you. How come you're not doing this like everybody else? Why aren't you praying with your head covered? Why aren't you doing such and such? Why aren't you reading this version? Why did you say that? Why are you wearing a Thundercat shirt? When they accuse you of doing Illuminati signs, I'm going to invite the fantastic fews that say this. I, I am going to tell you to go through your gallery, go through your photo albums or look through your gallery Look at all your poses that you were just doing with your kids. Look at the position of your feet and your hands. And tell me if your children and your seven-year-old children and if you were doing Illuminati signs. No, they, you're not. The purpose of the Illuminati and those of the secret society is to do things that looks like normal poses with 
and all and normal poses but there are more things than just hand and feet gestures that lets them identify one another because you have people that will be accusing people of being in the illuminati because of how they have their hands and do you see the square there you will drive yourself absolutely batty my brothers and sisters we are called to speak god's word we are a people that we are not going to be accepted praise god when you are not quickly accepted and invited into all arenas jesus was not quickly accepted into all things all the time he was thrown out he was pushed through the cities and they attempted to push him off a cliff with that in mind there is a balance we're not always being wide herbs we're not there to just you know detonate and to destroy there's a time to build and to plant but i'm here to tell you there's a lot of people that will try to muzzle us and tell us to be quiet but yet the ways of the world and carnality and the ways people want to be and the way they want to choose to live and their way of life and their beliefs, it can be blared on the house stops. It can be in 3D, live and in living color. This is okay. It can be 4K, HD. Highly contrasted, high concentrates of it. It is okay. But they want to muzzle you and they want to tell you, oh, that you're, you're being too harsh. Hell is harsher. The flames of hell is very harsh. The demons in hell that, are, that awaits to mutilate, dissect, and digest your soul that cannot die is a lot harsher than the truths that are being spoken now to save your soul. The Lord is patient and kind to us. But I'm here to tell you, don't mistake Jesus, don't mistake God as being a softy. When Jesus returns, he's returning as a judge. He's coming as a judge to separate the wheat from the tares. He will put those who have been ungodly on the left and those who followed him and did his commandments and spoke his word boldly on the right. One group will hear, enter into everlasting life. And there's a other that we hear, depart from me into the flames of hell. Oh my goodness. Is that love? It's not about love. It's about God being just. Repent and turn to the Lord. This is what we are supposed to tell people. The same fire and the same corrections that we speak, the Lord has chastised us just the same. Speak boldly. Speak what God tells you to speak. Do what he tells you to do. Do not dilute his words. Do not allow people to shut you up. Do not allow people who comes on typing and saying things to you on your chats or sending you messages telling you need to tone down, you need to calm down. And this is why it's important that we remain in prayer and in fasting because if you're not, they will come against you. I can tell you since I've been fasting, as I hit the latter end of my fast, there's been a lot of opposition and a lot of little things that's come up. And that is why I ask you guys to pray for me all the time because there's power in numbers and in prayers. I never think to myself that I'm just the superhero here and I'm the chosen one. I'm the golden child that my prayer is just the best. I need you guys prayers as well. So keep me in prayer, but ensure you have a prayer life and you're the word of God. Because if not, the, the, the criticisms and things can chip through you and make you second guess yourself. Stand fast in the liberty wherein you have been made free and be not be entangled and do not be again entangled in the yokes of bondage. Continue to speak what God tells you to do. Continue to speak what God tells you to speak. Continue to tell them and to cry out, there's a fire, 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 repent, repent, repent. So many people want to go back to bury the dead. So many want to go in to save their most precious things in the midst of flames and they're going to be consumed. So many are concerned with the things of the world and they want to get the patty cake versions of the gospel and they want you only to give them the candy parts of the word. But you must tell them about hell and damnation because it is eternal. They will wish and hope and beg God for the opportunity to come back and hear the messages they now laugh and scorn and 
argue with you about so that they're no longer in their being spiritually decapitated and cannot die in the pits of hell. Hell is a place that you do not want to be and it is our job to save as many souls as possible. For the six or seven people that will come against you, there's one that, you know what, you planted a seed and they heard something and you have done your job. You must be bold. You must have the face of a lion. You must stand fast in your armor. Do not allow anyone to talk you down and talk you out of what God has said. You know, there's some things, guys, you just don't even need to answer it. Satan sometimes only needs a response. There are people that just sit home and they argue behind a keyboard and this is their pastime. They're bitter, they're lost, and they don't like the truth. Speak the word of God. The Bible is not always speaking about sweet things and the lovely rainbows in which we're all going to slide down into this, grace, this great mass of holy skittles and, and, and jelly beans and popcorn and spiritual Sundays. We must speak the word of God. It's okay to be unpopular. It's okay to be rejected. But rest assured, you are saving souls. The ones that are popping up are the same unclean spirits that will cry out when Jesus will show up in the room because they don't want truth. They want you to tell them it's okay to be in sin. It's okay to do what you want to do. They want the OSAS theory of you can do all kinds of dirty, nasty sins and enter into the heavens and enter into everlasting life. You can beat your wife and cheat on your husband. You can rape children. You can extort children. You can steal. You can kill. But as long as you said the sinner's prayer, you're going to enter into everlasting life. This is not in the word of God. It is a lie. Continue to speak God's word. And with that, ensure that you're entering into his presence. And you're getting the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Because it's only through his might and his power that we're able to do this. Again, guys, keep me in your prayers. Also, fast. Ensure you're fasting. You see, there's a lot of people who are packed with yams, potato salad, steak, chicken, and macaroni elbows. They will not turn their plates over for anything. They'll be on a chocolate, you know, this a, a all chocolate fast. They're on an all cake fast. I'm having nothing but cake. And so what happens is they don't fast and they don't put themselves before the throne of God to get understanding so the blinders comes off. And so they come and they're smudging the word of God. Fingers filled with biscuit grease because they've been eating again. And they will not fast because they're not yielded. So they cannot hear the deep things of God. And then they'll try to tell you you're not hearing from God. Excuse me. You're full of food, not godly spiritual food, but food that blinds your eyes and feeds the flesh. Fast, put that flesh on the altar. You don't have to do 40 days and 40 nights, but once a week, get in the presence of the Lord. Repent. You have people that's filled with unforgiveness and hatred and malice, still moist from masturbation. Yes. Wanting to say what God would do. Was God pleased when you were masturbating? Were you thinking about him when you were sinning against him, but you want to be an advocate for God? To say what he will not say when people are bringing correction or speaking the word of God. The fact of the matter is they throw God in there as a spare tire to justify their sinful behaviors, their hardened necks, hardened hearts, and stiff necks. And their sordid way of thinking. They'll throw God in there. God is love, but God is also holy. But yet, there are individuals that will pick and choose when they will honor God. Don't follow these individuals. 
My brothers and sisters, there are times we'll have to give hard and harsh words. It is to save their soul. But in the end of it all, you must be giving directives on how they can turn to God. Because every time the prophets will speak what thus said the Lord, they always gave them directives. They always let them know the Lord does love you, but you must turn to him. Return to him. He is willing. Though your sins be as scarlet, he will make you white as snow if you will repent. But if you do not repent, then the wages will be death. Period. End of story. There need be no apologizing or explaining what your word meant. Unless the Lord gave you the okay to do that. And he's not going to tell you to go back and pedal back. He may have you reaffirm some things. But I'm here to tell you. It is our job to speak the word of God. Whether they throw stones, spit, they want to condemn you. It is okay. As long as you know that you're in the presence of the Lord and you've been seeking him and you're doing what he tells you to do, so be it. All right, guys, stay up. Let's continue on our fast.